Good, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's Friday again. Um, welcome to TGI Pausa. And let me double check to get everyone, uh, get everything set up correctly. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, I think everyone, everything is set up correctly. So uh, let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone again. Uh, my name is CJ and uh, uh, welcome to TGI Pulsar. Uh, it's a weekly live stream that um, we'll talk about uh, Pulsar um, in general and uh, as well as including all the, everything related to Pulsar and Pulsar ecosystem. And uh, it runs uh, every, uh, Friday on uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, in this week's uh, episode, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, Postal Schema. And uh, Postal Schema is a very fundamental uh, concept. I, I, was, I would say, I would even call it a first, uh, first class citizen uh, within Postal. And uh, it's super important kind of to making sure you produce the correct uh, structure, uh, structured uh, events into uh, puzzle topics. And it's also a key component that uh, for puzzle to be integrated integrated uh, with um, uh, Flink, uh, Spark, and as well as Presto uh, to do all these data processing related uh, tasks. And as well as um, kind of be able to that Flink circle, uh, Spark circle, and Presto circle is able to query those events. Yeah. So uh, in probably next couple uh, uh, episodes, I'm going to talk about schema and uh, all things related to schema, pre uh, probably Presto and as well as uh, Flink uh, integration uh, with uh, Pulsar. So uh, in this week, let's get started uh, with uh, Postal Schema first. And uh, as usual, uh, uh, we will just start with a week in review. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, if you have watched, uh, like my previous episode is, uh, um, we, uh, I mentioned that uh, 2.6 release is ongoing and uh, there's been uh, quite a lot of uh, features and bug fixes uh, that will be going into 2.6. And uh, I think the, the whole community and the committers and as well as the release manager is working really hard to get uh, 2.6 out. So I'll probably just give uh, us uh, another one or two weeks, we are able to get those uh, changes merged and uh, starting um, making uh, progress on two sex release. And uh, in this week, I think uh, one of the important uh, kind of announcement that we have met uh, this week is we announced uh, Stream Native Hub. Uh, it, uh, it's an online uh, service for host, hosting all the uh, kind of integrations, uh, including connectors, uh, offloaders, uh, project handlers, uh, as well as uh, different type of integration with third party ecosystem. Uh, so here uh, you can uh, find uh, 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 different uh, type of in in integrations you are looking for. Uh, for example, like connectors, uh, either developer, if either uh, the connectors are built in connectors or developer outside of uh, the uh, upstream uh, Porsche, you can all find the connectors here. And uh, our flow, I think most of the uploaders can kind of uh, build in, build in our flow right now, but uh, in 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 the case uh, people if people already write uh, other uploaders, they can also uh, uh, submit uploaders here and protocol handler for sure. Um, Kafka Kafka handler is one of the one of them and. Uh, if you watch uh, our uh, Kafka on Pulsar webinar before, you might be uh, 
you, you might know that we are also working on uh, MQTT on PULSA as well as MQP on PULSA. So those protocol handlers would be coming out in release uh, to uh, Stream Native Hub uh, as well. And uh, so for example, if you want to uh, check one of the uh, connectors, let's see, uh, ActiveMQ connectors, uh, it will give you all the information, uh, like including uh, versions, uh, what other features, and uh, kind of the documentation uh, instructions for installing uh, the connectors, and uh, including uh, some of the uh, tutorial how you can run uh, these connectors, and uh, it will also include some of the information like. Uh, what is the license and who is the author and uh, what is the source code and a bunch of the different things uh, that would uh, be released as part of this uh, uh, like uh, so would be kind of as part of the uh, these connectors that are being hosted in um, uh, in the uh, stream native hub uh, you can uh, also, uh, if you want, if you write a connectors, if you want to be discovered uh, over the the whole uh, Pulsar ecosystem, you can as well uh, go submit a, a, a pull request to the hub. And uh, the right now, uh, we most of the hub, uh, the, the this GitHub repo is mostly for hosting the uh, metadata information. Uh, uh, and uh, we have uh, providing uh, kind of comprehensive instructions for people who want to uh, add their connectors or their plugins into Streaming Hub. They can follow in, uh, instructions. Uh, we want to uh, making sure it, it became a, a very convenient tools for people to find uh, the useful integrations within uh, Pulsa ecosystem, and we are able to grow the whole uh, Pulsa ecosystem. So that is kind of the um, uh, stream native hub, and, and along with that is, uh, uh, I think people were, who were looking for ActiveMQ connected before, you can easily find uh, it on, on stream native hub. And I think uh, we developed this ActiveMQ uh, connector in open source it under Apache, uh, Apache license v2. And uh, as well as uh, we also have a project uh, called the Open Tracing Integration. So uh, it basically providing uh, an inter interceptor in implementation using the Open Tracing API. So you can use that to uh, intercepting any uh, messages and uh, and integrating uh, with open tracing. So you, so if you if you already have already have open tracing uh, uh, like system uh, in your organization and you want to get some of this tracing information uh, into your open tracing system, then uh, you can just use this open tracing. Uh, 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 open tracing in interceptor. So, just there's an example here is you can just config uh, using uh, an interceptor called tracing uh, producer interceptor, and that interceptor would just pointing to an open tracing endpoint, and then I can just get uh, this tracing information into your uh, tracing system. And uh, it's available in uh, as a open source source code. Uh, so it's a it's a repo called uh, Pulsar Tracing, and the the goal for us is we want to uh, building out the whole uh, tracing integrations for Pulsar, not just for Pulsar client, but as well as for Pulsar functions, so uh, people can use uh, easily use this tracing uh, plugin uh, to get uh, their uh, Pulsar applications uh, traced. So this is uh, tra uh, open tracing. Uh, we are going to kind of release more integrations uh, into StreamNative Hub. But if you already have uh, any connections you want to uh, share with the whole Pulsar eco ecosystem, 
uh, feel free to um, contribute your uh, integration or plugin to uh, uh, Stream Native Hub. Okay, so this is uh, this is the this week's in review, and um, uh, so uh, let's get back to uh, the topic that we are going to talk uh, for this week is uh, talking about the uh, POSA schema. Uh, so uh, in the we uh, in the past in the uh, in the past few releases we kind of have uh, kept have caught up the whole uh, kind of documentation about uh, schema like in terms of like why we need to use schema and and just understand a bit about how schema uh, work and as well as uh, what is the schema evolution in capability between uh, different uh, strategies and how you how you can manage these uh, schemas so uh, um, you can use this as a reference uh, in your future work if you want to integrating uh, uh, using post or schema in your uh, system uh, I would I actually have uh, let me see I actually have a simple presentation. I can uh, just quickly uh, talk a bit about uh, how schema work and and I would uh, in the remaining of this episode, I would just use a hands-on uh, session uh, to kind of using some of the example to show how exactly we can use uh, schema in uh, uh, for developing post of producers and consumers. So uh, in this case, oh, oops, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, let me see. Uh, it seems, okay. I think, um, uh, okay, let's get started. Uh, so usually this is a, uh, a very common use case is, is you usually need to um, use uh, send structure data into, let me double check, uh, everything is correct. Uh, okay. So, uh, in uh, POSA as a kind of uh, a messaging and streaming system, uh, it provides uh, this pop sub interface for people to produce messages. And in a common use case, uh, a common behavior is people would produce structured data into a structured events into topics. And what, what people usually do is they would just write their own uh, serialization um, uh, using a serialization for, um, library to serialize a structure, uh, a class into a byte array and produce that using a byte array. So this is kind of a typical way how people using uh, mastery bus for uh, producing and consuming masters. Uh, but there's some of the problem of doing that is you have to handle a lot of passing uh, exceptions uh, well, you you have to looking into to see uh, like if there's a field that you are looking for doesn't exist anymore. Or is there any type changes between uh, uh, in the type changes within the field of a, a given structure? So a lot of past uh, exceptions that you have to handle. It's not very convenient, and it's usually like error prone. Is uh, it really it's really hard for uh, uh, consumers to be realizing if there's any uh, wrong data has been produced into the topics and especially if you, you have a lot of different teams consuming the same set of data so usually you want to have some way to enforce some sort of schema or some sort of structure in your in your data to making sure um, that everyone of the producers kind of producing the data in the uh, in the structure that 
was agreed by both uh, producers and consumers. And uh, one of the way to achieve that is you need schema, and that's the the this the led into the introduction of uh, schema within POSA. And what does a schema do? So, in a kind of the simple form, it's uh, it basically define how to serialize in the de deserialize uh, uh, data, uh, but that is uh, that is a very basic concept that is uh, you can do the same thing uh, using any serialization or deserialization framework but uh, schema is m m beyond uh, serialization and deserialization it's more about define how you want to evolve your data format and how to handle backwards compatibility so uh, in order to do that is you need to introduce this uh, metadata information, uh, what we call is schema information. Schema information is basically define what is the structure of, uh, uh, of your data. And uh, in the schema information, it typically including uh, a few fields. That is, uh, the first field is type, that it will tell you uh, what is the type of a schema. And uh, the schema field is uh, is basically uh, the schema information. Uh, sometimes we call it schema data. It's the definition of the schema. And what kind of data would be put in this field is uh, is the schema type implementation specific. For example, uh, JSON. Uh, if it's a JSON schema, you might see uh, kind of uh, uh, schema definition about the st JSON structure. Uh, but if it's a, a kind of string schema, then uh, there's no uh, schema data because uh, the type itself already define uh, the schema. And the properties uh, itself is more uh, kind of application specific data and uh, that property can be used for uh, defining uh, like um, enhancing uh, also enriching application related behaviors. So uh, I'll probably just pause here and uh, I'll just use uh, an example to show how it exactly looks like uh, in, uh, in POSA. Sorry. Oops. So I already kind of have a topic that is called Afro payment. And as you can see here, I am using a tool called Postal Admin, and there's a command uh, group called Schemas. And uh, I use the, these tools to get a schema, get a schema for a specific topic. And that topic is uh, one of the example I, I wrote before. And uh, this scheme, uh, uh, it return the schema information, including uh, which version of this schema and the, uh, the whole block of the schema information. And within the schema information, it will including uh, type, which is an Avro schema. And uh, in the schema field, it basically the description of the schema itself. Uh, it the the description of uh, it. We use Afro specification for describing the schema for uh, structure of the schema like Afro JSON and ProBuff. We just use the same uh, Afro spe specification for describing those fields and. As you can see here, it's uh, it basically tell you uh, within this structure you have two fields. One field is ID and the type is string, and the other field is uh, mount and the type is double. And uh, there's n there is no uh, other properties. Is uh, oh I see. I think I have two different versions, uh, but. Uh, I think I can also get one. So uh, I have a, a version one. Uh, version one is the 
uh, it has some properties that the properties is always uh, around now or uh, JSR uh, 310 con conven uh, conversion enable. So those are kind of a property that would be used by Avro schema to define some of the uh, features are uh, how they how Avro schema would handle serialization and deserialization. So it's more an application specific uh, um, properties that can be used by uh, schema. So go back to the uh, kind of presentation. Uh, what you can see here, the first thing is uh, uh, schema type. Uh, in Pulsar, we kind of group the schema type into two groups. The, the one type is primitive types. The other is complicated types. Uh, in other way is more, uh, I, I will kind of explain uh, different uh, categories later. So prim primitive is kind of pretty much same as most of the primitive types in uh, languages. Like, uh, uh you can have uh eight bits signed uh integer or uh, 60 bits signed integers like throw double uh bytes uh, string types so all this type you can find in different uh, languages and like in java in python or you can find similar similar thing it's a, just a simple type and uh, the example to use a simple type it's also very simple it's just like you specify uh, when you want to create a producer or create a consumer, you just specify this uh, schema is the uh, a given type, like schema string. Uh, then uh, you would get a string uh, producer that you can just produce string. And similarly, you can construct a, a consumer with schema string and then receive the uh, the string value from uh, from that topic. So. Primitive uh, schema is pretty simple. So uh, there's nothing uh, really special there. Currently, uh, we support uh, two complicated, uh, complex uh, types. One is key value. The other is uh, struct, struct, uh, struct schema. And uh, key value is a spatial uh, schema is uh, in uh, process, uh, Typed uh, producer, it doesn't support key and value separately. So we have to introduce a special key value schema in order to support uh, topics that require both key and value. And I would uh, using a demo and of an example to showcase key value and explain key value later on. And uh, we can get started uh, with uh, struct. So uh, currently, uh, Pulsar uh, supports three struct uh, schema uh, was, uh, that is uh, Avro, JSON, and ProBaf. And this is the type. And the type would kind of de this uh, schema type define how uh, Pulsar would serialize and deserialize the data. And schema definition is basically describe what kind of the structure or what are the fields that in those uh, uh, in those data. And we use Avro as a specification language for describing the schema. And uh, there are kind of two approach that you can use uh, the struct uh, schema. That one is, I usually call it a static way. That is, you need to predefine uh, the structure of your schema. And either like in Java, you can write a POJO, or you can use Avro ProBuff to generate it, uh, generate uh, classes uh, from uh, Avro and ProBuff uh, uh, definition files. The other way is more called generic, or sometimes I also call it a, a program way to uh, kind of construct or define the schema. Uh, this, this is very useful when uh, the struct is unknown or not predefined. 
So uh, I, I, I actually have a few slides talking about this, but instead I would just go using some of the example to showcase uh, what exactly the uh, Avro schema or struct schema works and how, how you can use that for uh, programs. Uh, so let's go back to uh, this. I act we actually pub we start publishing a collection of uh, uh, examples for uh, like showcase or demonstrate uh, different uh, matching and uh, event streaming capabilities that uh, you can use uh, Pulsar to build. And uh, one of the section is called uh, Pulsar uh, examples. And that example is basically including some of the pops up uh, examples as well as some of the uh, Avro examples, as uh, schema examples. So let's get started with uh, produce and consume uh, Avro schema. Uh, so uh, they, you can always uh, kind of find the code here. Uh, I but I I already had import this uh, into a uh, IntelliJ project. I will probably just show that project. So one second. So uh, this is the project I import from the examples. Uh, but what you can see here is uh, we have a module called schema that is showcase all the postal schema examples. Uh, let's get started with this. Uh, sorry, this is the documentation. So just go to this. It would including bunch of the Avro uh, schema. So in this is the producer. So what you can see here is the producer is using is uh, it's using a pojo. Uh, what does uh, uh, so remember, uh, I'll just move here. Remember we have, uh, uh, we have mentioned that uh, there are kind of two ways kind of to use this struct schema. That the first way is you can de define a struct that using uh, POJO or uh, Afro generate classes. And uh, the the first example I want to show here is more uh, using Pojo. So you can define. Uh, uh, actually, this is a this is already a, a kind of. A, uh, it's actually generated from an Avro uh, definition file. So uh, it basically define. Uh, this is a Pojo that is. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, this is a record and that, uh, the record has two fields. That one is uh, ID, the other, the other one is amount. And uh, it was generated a uh, bunch of the, like, the Java classes. And in this example, we are using this payment, uh, Pojo. And we define this uh, as a schema def uh, definition. And uh, it will pass into schema Afro. So that is the way how you construct an Afro schema. And uh, and then you can use this schema to construct a consumer. Uh, and the consumer will re receive the kind of uh, a payment POJO. So in the loop, you once you call receive, it will just return a mastery. And uh, you can use get value to re retrieve the, the, the actual value. So this is the consumer. And similarly, you can do uh, from producer side, uh, you can uh, you can construct the same uh, schema and then uh, construct a producer and then produce the mastery. And as you can see here, you don't really write any serialization and deserialization. All the serialization and deserialization is actually happening by this Avro uh, schema implementation. Uh, so if you want to learn how 
uh, Afro uh, serialized and deserialized, you can check out the uh, implementation. But uh, in there, in in this episode, we are kind of more focus more focus on uh, how to use uh, this Afro schema. So uh, let me just run a few uh, demos. Yeah, let me see. Okay. So this is the example I, so this is the example code I just checked out. And uh, uh, I think we already have the documentation here. You can just follow in the instruction. So uh, let me just first run uh, uh, the producer to produce the, uh, the uh, the Afro structure. Uh, okay, uh, I think. Oh, um, man. I think I need to build a project again. Let me see. I'm sorry, I didn't put uh, and build a project. So give me probably the couple seconds. It should be almost there. Yeah, I think uh, we just basically package all the kind of examples into one jar. So you can simply just run the 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 jar without any any dependency. So once it build, uh, it will generate uh, a postal schema example jar under the uh, schema target directory. And so now I can run this uh, example again. So it will produce ten messages, and then we can uh, follow the instruction. Say. Uh, I want to read these uh, examples, but so read the 10 message I just produced, and I can just run uh, schema. So again, as you can see here, uh, because I I already produced a bunch of the master before, so you will see all the master here. And the value is actually what you print, 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 uh, print here is, it's a kind of, uh, uh, struct that including both ID and amount. Okay, so this says uh, you use the for producing the uh, kind of a st static schema that you predefine the structure and then you use that structure to uh, produce the, the messages. Sometimes uh, you probably want to build the schema in your own way. So then uh, you can use the gen generic schema builder in generic record builder to build build out the schema and use that uh, as a schema information. And uh, we would also uh, use that as example. So uh, actually just go back to the readme. Uh, it, so this is the, the first one is more like you have a predefined messages that uh, you want to uh, kind of produce uh, uh, Avro messages. And you can also do the similar thing is you can use these, um, uh, the uh, generic, generic schema builder and generic record builder for building out your schema in information. And we also including some of this example. This is a generic, ge generic schema. So this is uh, a producer that is building uh, using the schema builder and as well as the record builder. So uh, actually, let me just put this side by side uh, so you can do a comparison between Avro schema producer and the generic schema producer. So as you can see here is the difference is how you construct the schema. 
in uh, the st static way is you need to predefine the struct struct a payment and then you construct the uh, schema uh, using this uh, class and but in the generic way is you are building out the schema using the record schema builder so uh, in this example is I'm building out a schema called uh, I put I give the a package name or the record name and then I specify a field called ID and the type is string and uh, I, I field amount, the type is double. And those are required fields. And this is similar as uh, how you can, how you use uh, a POJO to define the schema. So these two, these two schema are compatible. And uh then once you have this uh, schema builder you can uh build using the schema type and the schema types basically say i want i have this schema information and i want to use afro as my ser serialization framework to serialize the schema then uh i can use schema dot uh generic and pass in the schema information to to kind of uh, build out a generic schema. Uh, and then I would use that to construct the uh, producer. And when I produce uh, records that using generic schema, uh, it's a bit different from uh, the, uh, the static schema. Because in a static schema, is you just uh, construct a uh, POJO directly, and uh, in the generic schema, you need to you can use the generic record to building out the record. Like uh, you can use the this schema to new a record builder and set uh, individual field and uh, produce that to uh, the topic. So this is the generic way for producing the, the schema. So uh, we can follow this uh, instruction. Uh, so as you can see here, I didn't uh, change my consumer. I still using the Avro schema consumer example, which is the static way. Uh, but because I am making sure the uh, schema are compatible between uh, generic and the the uh, using the generic approach uh, versus the kind of static approach, so I don't need to uh, separate a uh, way for producing that schema, uh, so that consuming that schema. So I can just using the same approach. So I already have this uh, Avro schema consumer example running, which is for receiving the uh, master from Afro payments topic. So I can just open uh, uh, sorry examples clients. So I can just open an another terminal to produce the uh, uh, messages in that is a kind of building uh, that is using generic schema. So let's just produce 10 messages. So as you can see here, uh, it's also, you can also receive the same uh, set of data. So that is the kind of the, the example for uh, producing the uh, messages using generic schema uh, builder and as well as generic record builder. So this is on the producer side. And sometimes you would be thinking, uh, how about consumer side? Uh, if I don't know what is the structure of this consumer, about of this topic, how can I can I still consume 
the masters and get a structure of that masters? The answer is yes. And that can be done through a, a schema implementation we have in, sorry, uh, so in, uh, in POSA, which is called uh, Auto Schema. So as, as you probably already can guess from this name is it automatically consume uh, the messages from any of these topics and return it as a, a generic generic record. So that is the how to consume. So as you can see here, it does you did you didn't you don't need to specify any uh, schema prior to like consuming the messages, but you would get the uh, uh, generic record. And the generic record would tell you, uh, if you looking into the message, it will tell you what are the fields available, and uh, you can retrieve uh, individual fields uh, to get the value. So uh, since this example, I know uh, uh, there are two fields. The one is uh, ID, the other one is amount. So I, in this example, I'll just like use that to receive the uh, uh, the data. So uh, this is consumer. So I can just run this consumer. Let's, let me see. So this consumer is called out consume schema consumer example. Uh, so I just let me just change change the consumer. Uh, oh, okay. So this, I believe this, the, the name is generic. Yeah, so I typed the wrong package name. Hmm? Oh. Sorry, class name is wrong. Okay, so as you can see here, it's an auto consume, uh, it's a consumer that use, uh, uh, that uses uh, auto consume schema to consume the messages from a topic. So let's see uh, if I can just show it online. So this is I'm using a generic schema producer to produce the, the messages. So as you can see here, it received the messages produced by a generic schema. And I can uh, kind of switch to use the the static approach. So I, let's use the Avro and what else? Uh, yeah, Avro schema producer. So it's produced a non masters that was constructed using a static schema. So uh, the uh, Avro schema that was built using a static approach. So uh, auto consume can uh, receive that uh, master and uh, kind of return the right structure. So that is the. Uh, that is the kind of the Avro schema. You can use a generic way uh, to build uh, the schema or receive the messages in uh, return the structure of uh, the event. And uh, uh, auto consume is very useful, uh, especially when you are handling uh, like uh, CDC related uh, like use cases, because you in uh, in the CDC use cases you don't know uh, exactly what are the schema uh, that will come out from a database then you can uh, use that to construct uh, a generic ge generic record and then uh, serialize that generic records uh, back to uh, masters so all to consume is uh, very uh, helpful and uh, if, uh, if you don't know schema, uh, please try to use auto, auto consume. That will uh, 
help a lot. And I want to mention a bit about how to produce here. How to produce here is uh, it's a bit different from how to consume, but it's a uh, put a schema that produced a byte array, but it was making sure the byte array uh, kind of is a valid message that uh, according to the schema in the topic. So in the other way is how to produce, what well, basically what to produce would do is the schema will fetch the uh, schema information from the topic. So you know uh, what exactly the schema information and each time you produce a master and the producer, this is done in the producers, uh, in the client side, the producer will verify if the byte array is the master that kind of compatible with the, the schema. So this is basically what uh, how to produce do. And it's useful uh, for some of the use cases that you are building out an application that is replicate uh data from one system with schema information uh to the other system uh also with schema information uh uh the producer or the uh, the whole process would making sure uh those messages are uh, kind of meet the requirement of the schema in the destination uh in, in the destined uh topic so that is how to schema. And the last one is uh, I want to show a bit is about the key value schema. Uh, in a lot of use cases, uh, especially if you're building out um, uh, event streaming application, you want to making sure uh, in a lot of event, event streaming application, you also need key, both key and value. Especially you want to use a key value for doing these uh, transformations. And, uh, but you might already notice that uh, in process type system, it only accept a single type. So in this producer, it only accept single type. It doesn't accept a value, a key or a value. And to work around that, we in in POSA we introduce uh, a key value schema and that is allow you to uh, get the key value in uh, so uh, to allow you to enforce any key value information uh, a key value structures in uh, in a topic so we also write a kind of um, example to showcase how you can produce and consume messages using key value schema and uh, the example show uh, shows there's an inline method uh, the, the other is separate and i would explain a bit about that uh, later uh, let's get started with this uh, key value schema uh, separated approach uh, so uh, you can still follow the example if you want to try out. Uh, but in our example is, let's see how it, we construct the, a key value uh, separate schema uh, producer. So uh, in the key value schema, you need to, uh, so first thing you might already notice that uh, if you want to use key value schema, you need to spec using the type key value and specify a uh, key type and a value type. And uh, this is kind of a, a, a walk around way to uh, solve the problem that a producer doesn't have a key type in uh, its producer or in its schema in, uh, uh, interface. So, uh you have to specify key value when you construct a, a key value schema and uh, in the key value schema you will spe specify a key schema which is uh, in this example is a, a 32 bits uh integer uh, for key and a string as a value 
and you need to specify uh, a third field called uh, key value encoding type. And uh, if you take a look at here is it basically define how you want to serialize the key value pair. And separate is you would pitch back the key as the master key that being stored in the ma uh, uh, along with the parcel messages. In line means I want to put both key value together as a mesh payload. So that is the different that is the different way how you want to serialize the key value uh, information. Ideally, in, in most of, uh, in a lot of way, I would encourage people using the key value encoding type uh, as, uh, separate because that will fully leverage the uh, mesh key and as well as partition and bunch of the whole stuff that you have in, uh, uh, in, uh, in POSA. Uh, but sometimes if you want, if you don't want leverage that uh, uh, parcel message key, you can use the inline approach that is put a key value as a payload, uh, but parcel support both. So uh, this is the way you construct a key value schema. And with that being said, as you can see here, you basically can use any kind of uh, schema as the key schema, or uh, any kind of uh, schema as the value schema. So that would uh, give you all this uh, information. And uh, once you pass this information to producer to create a producer instance, then you would get a producer with that can produce key value pairs. And then you would you should be able to get a uh, producer message uh, with key value pair, but still remember you need to construct this key value object uh, to put key value together as the master value. It's not a very convenient way, but uh, kind of it works out well to fit in in cur current uh, parser uh, schema and also uh, its type system. And similarly, uh, you can construct a consumer to uh, consume a key value pairs from a topic. So in this way is uh, you construct a consumer that is receive the key value pairs and using the key value pairs, you can get both key and value. Still uh, using this as an example, uh, let me just try this. Uh, so this is a, a, a example. So you, you can also uh, follow the markdown, the readme to do to kind of work through the example yourself. Uh, but in my uh, session, I'll just like run this example. So I first start. Uh, Oh, I already have data there, but <laughs> ignore them. Uh, I have uh, I run a consumer that is uh, try to receive the messages, and I would write uh, I'll run a producer to produce the messages. So uh, as you can see here, I produced 10 messages uh, that is, uh, you should be able to receive the 10 messages. And uh, if you want to inspect what exactly that, how like uh, Pulsar will store this information in the, in its, uh, uh, in its, uh, uh, like uh, mastery payload, we can use this, uh, Pulsar client, which is itself, uh, actually I need to open <laughs> different terminal. I, we, you can use Pulsar client uh, and consume to receive the raw messages. So then you can see how exactly the key value has been packed into 
uh, uh, post a message payload. So let me see what is the topic name I use here. Okay, key value separate topic. So, oops. So I am using a raw client that is trying to receiving exactly the the information, and the and let me just produce this again. I produce this ten message again. So as you can see here, the key the the value is stored as the value. But it it doesn't the key doesn't store along with the payload. So this this is the uh, separate mode. So let's take a look at a bit the inline mode. So uh, in the inline example, is you just specify the key value encoding as inline. And let me see what is the topic. So here is the topic. Let me change this. Oops. This is in nine. So it's basically waiting for receiving the in nine messages. And let me run this example. So if you just go, oops. Example schema TV. This is the in nine schema example. So it still produced 10 messages. But as you can see here, oops. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, I think it's, uh, this is a good question. Uh, oh, key is integer, sorry. I, I thought the key is, uh, so this is a row byte, and I think it would be interpret as uh, zero because it's uh, it actually here. Let me just change this quickly, and then we will see how it looks like. So let me change this to string. And let's change this to key. We'll just change this to topic two. Okay. So this should be fine. Let's see. Uh, let's do Maven install. While this, I, let me change this to topic two. So we are kind of basically waiting for uh, consuming the messages for uh, from uh, uh, key value in line topic two, and let's see if it complete. It's probably take a couple of seconds. And uh, so in nine, it's basically put the key and value together as the payload. So if we change to string, you would definitely see the difference here. So as you can see here, uh, we produce we change the kind of the key value into uh, a key. Uh, sorry, into into in line. And then you will see both key value are kind of uh, being packed into a uh, master payload. So if you're using a raw raw consumer to receive the messages, you will be uh, you will see uh, both the key values together in the master payload. So this is in line. Uh, but as I as I said before, uh, in most of the time, you probably just one uh, using separate, but uh, if there's any special case that you need in nine, you can also switch in using in nine. So this is basically 
a very quick introduction of Pulsar and how you can use uh, uh, Pulsar schema to uh, produce structure in, uh, event into, into Pulsar. And uh, if you're interested in about uh, trying out this example, uh, please check out these Pulsar examples and uh, follow, ex uh, follow the README to try out those information. And uh, we will also try to push more examples uh, related to uh, schema. So uh, if you like the, the Pulsar example repo, start it, start it and uh, follow it uh, and get, up, uh, get updates. And we would periodically update the uh, Pulsar examples about uh, different features in uh, Pulsar. And that, that's all for today's episode, hope that give you a basic idea about Pulsar Schema and how to use Pulsar Schema to developing your applications. And in next episode, we'll be continue in uh, on uh, Schema, but we were talking uh, a bit about how Schema works and how we integrate uh, Schema with Flink. And that is, that. that's all for today. And thank you everyone uh, who is listening to uh, this live stream. And if you think uh, uh, TGI Pulsar is a very useful live stream uh, for you to learn Pulsar, uh, use Pulsar and uh, follow us on YouTube. And so you can get updates and get, get notifications about uh, what is the coming episode uh, on uh, uh, TGI Pulsar. And uh, thank you everyone again, uh, good, uh, Good, uh, good evening, uh, good night, uh, good, good morning, no matter where you are, and uh, and see you in uh, next episode. Bye bye.